Good evening everybody, it's time to make some enemies and burn some bridges. This is obviously not new, there's been an ongoing conversation for a really long time about whether or not certain types of YouTuber merchandise, books, events are exploitation, but it feels like lately this conversation has got a lot louder and a lot muckier from what I've seen. It applies to all sorts of different YouTubers, but right now because they are some of the biggest, it's been really focused around YouTubers who are managed by Gleam, with people having issues with events like Hello World and the whole Zoella advent calendar scandal. I just want to say straight off that I have zero interest in protecting YouTubers for the sake of it. I don't have a misguided sense of loyalty to other people just because they are YouTubers like me or because I'm worried that they're somehow going to blacklist me and it'll damage my career. I've done enough damage to my career by myself, thank you very much. But I have actually just been thinking about it a lot lately and discussing it with people and I actually think it's a really grey area. It's definitely not black and white, right and wrong. Do you think? I'm exploiting you for views. You don't care, you get to eat all the treats. Subscribe. Gleam, if you don't know, manage a lot of the big YouTubers like Zoe, Alfie, Tanya, Jim, Louise. They obviously weren't the ones who kickstarted this, but it was around the time when people were starting to think of YouTube more as a business. And when YouTubers themselves were becoming more like a brand. And I think Gleam have really worked with that and capitalized on it and have been really successful doing that. Here is the thing, this is the thing. Whether or not you personally think that an event, some merchandise or a book is worth the money is kind of irrelevant if there are people who do want them. I actually had a quick look out of interest comparing some of Zoella's new range with Harry Potter merchandise. Like the stuff that you can get from Platform 9 and 3 quarters here in London or at the studio tour and I have to say they're not that different. Both ranges are aimed at kids, both are mass produced in China, both are maybe not necessarily the highest of quality but what matters to people is the design on them and the fact that they are linked to something that they love. You can get quite plain Harry Potter notebooks for the same price as a Zoella notebook, you know mugs for £10. I do think it's comparable. You might be thinking that Harry Potter and Zoella aren't comparable in terms of like, you know, Harry Potter is this huge, long-lasting phenomenon. It's hard for me to understand, but there will be people out there who love Zoe way more than they love Harry Potter. And have I bought overpriced Harry Potter merchandise just because it had a Hogwarts crest stamped on the front? You bet I have. So I really feel like I'm not in a position to judge just because people are spending money on something that I personally am not interested in. I think the tension here is actually what we expect from YouTubers versus what we expect from like big brands or companies. YouTubers have always felt like one of us, like part of their appeal is that they're somebody you feel like you know. They're our big sisters, they look out for us. They feel like our friends rather than like they are celebrities with this huge chasm between us. But I think YouTube has changed so dramatically that this just isn't the case anymore. There is a huge divide between big YouTubers and their viewers now, especially in terms of lifestyle and also just the fact that for the sake of safety, there has to be that like physical barrier. But we still hold YouTubers to a higher standard when it comes to doing the things that brands or celebrities do all the time. Because when they sell us something, I say they, I mean we, I'm still a YouTuber, kind of. We are recommending you things and selling you things on the basis of trust. And the relationship that a viewer feels like they hold with that person, especially if the viewer is a lot younger because obviously that shifts the power dynamic even more. I feel like I'm rambling a bit, which is because I haven't really worked out how I feel about this. I think the real issue here is being honest about the fact that like products, books, events aren't made just because the YouTuber wants to create something that their viewer wants. It's not just a labour of love, it's also a job, it's how they pay bills, it's how they pay employees. It involves a lot of other companies rather than just one person individually. And at some point in that process, profits obviously matter. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. If you want to sell something, people want to buy that thing. I wish we could just be honest about the way that YouTube works now and admit that the divide exists and admit that this is a business. But I think obviously the reason it hasn't fully happened is that admitting these things would really damage the brand of somebody who benefits hugely from the idea that like we are all friends, we are all in this together. I think there are plenty of YouTubers, big and small, who are really upfront about these things, but there is a fine line to tread and it's about integrity. And on that note, I'm going to sell you something. Yeah, I'm actually not kidding. I kind of wish that I were right now. As you may know, my friend Johnny and I started a business uh, making pin badges and we've made a new one. This is Penelope, a beautiful cow. She is seven pounds, which is very competitive for enamel pins from small businesses. Don't worry, I checked. And we made these to celebrate cows who are excellent, obviously, and basically just big field puppies. So yeah, you can uh, get them at the link in the description. And 15% of our profits will be going to the farm animal sanctuary who look after animals that have been rescued from farm situations. Man, am I glad I didn't try and shoehorn that into a completely inappropriate video. <laughs>